Hey guys, Ivan here and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates so we got a guest posing from Samson Dauda about 3 or 4 weeks since he started his new cycle, that's right after the Arnold Classic he took 8 weeks off and now he's back on it and he looks significantly better than he did at the Pittsburgh Pro guest posing, much much better and actually really freaking impressive also I gotta say I noticed that his midsection control is actually really good here, much better than Arnold Classic Ohio it was no issue at the Arnold Classic UK but he was flat at that show from what I heard he didn't eat he didn't carb up at all for that show and here he's obviously full blown he's definitely a lot bigger from what I heard he's 320 pounds right here so considering how much he's eating right now and it's probably a lot his midsection is actually looking really good so I'm guessing it's all about how much food he's eating I'm guessing he didn't eat a lot of food this day because he was mindful of that and it's definitely something Nick Walker could consider now everything else I mean he looks phenomenal this year the Arnold Classic Ohio he looked so much improved from last year, like his back came up, his shoulders are also much bigger, his arms as well, I mean everything just keeps growing, not year after year, but season after season, he keeps progressing and now this is like him in the off season, so he's not exactly super conditioned, but he has 18 and a half weeks left before the Mr. Olympia, so he has enough time to work on conditioning. Now, the number one comment I'm seeing most often is, if he doesn't fix the condition, if he doesn't dig deep this year, he won't stay in the top 3 or he won't win the Mr. Olympia ever and so on, but we all know that. That's quite obvious, but in my opinion he doesn't need to come in like Andres Munzer conditioning, he needs to come in a little bit more conditioned than he was let's say at the Arnold Classic UK and full at the same time like I said at the Arnold Classic UK he was conditioned still not conditioned enough if you ask me he could be still like a little bit more conditioned not too much I think like 10% more conditioned but full he was flat at the Arnold UK he was flat and definitely smaller than ever but if he can bring like a little bit better conditioning with the kind of fullness that he had at the Arnold Classic UK actually Ohio that would be a deadly package and that could potentially challenge everybody including Hardy and Derek I can see it I see that now at the Arnold Classic Ohio I don't think he was in worse conditioning than Arnold UK but he was just so full that some of the separation wasn't really showing because his muscles were full with glycogen and it was just so thick the muscle was so dense that some of the separation was hidden because of that fullness and then at the Arnold Classic uh, UK he didn't carb up therefore he looked a little bit more detailed because the separation was showing a little bit better however he wasn't as full you can see it definitely in his legs, in his arms, I mean everywhere, his lats, his chest here, you can see that he was a bit too flat, which, you know, in comparison to Hadi, you know, he definitely, he looked smaller than Hadi here, I mean, usually Samson is the biggest guy, but here next to Hadi, and Hadi was also flat, Hadi was also flatter than usual, but he looked bigger than Samson here because of that, so I don't really like the Arnold UK look, I prefer the Arnold Ohio look, and you guys remember what happened after the Ohio, his body was failing, he wasn't sure if he was gonna do the Arnold UK, so he probably didn't really push too hard, and he was just focused on ending the season, going on a vacation, so I don't think he improved conditioning, I think it was only the different peak week. Now, I want to see him full, like he was at the Arnold Ohio, but I want to see him push for conditioning a little bit more, you know, getting those glutes finally lean, that's the issue if you ask me. I want to see all the fat and water removed from the glutes, from the hamstrings, the lower back and like from, from the front as well I mean his back is the problem area so that's gonna go away last but as that gets more conditioned the front will follow as well so if he does that, if he simply lowers the body fat percent a little bit more and then comes in super blasting full and big I think that can be a deadly package once again, potentially a Mr. Olympia winning package and for those of you who might say that I have a love-hate relationship with Samson or something like that guys, I just want to make it clear, I'm sure many of you understand but I never had an issue with Samson's physique, I was always a huge fan of his physique I just didn't like the way he handled the situation with Milos I still don't like it, I hope someday they will resolve it, I don't condone what Samson did, it wasn't classy, I didn't like it, but as far as his physique, I have to be honest, I have to be real, 
I see a ton of potential in this guy. I mean, like, potential to become the, the, the greatest in the world in this era. I can see it. I'm sure all of you can see it as well. I just don't know if he has it mentally. That's the issue. We'll see if he's going to be able to push for that conditioning, to do the cardio that he needs, to really suffer, to go to that dark place, to get super peeled and do a proper peak week and do all that properly now with, without a coach himself, with the help of his wife. It's going to be a challenge for sure. Is it super likely in this situation for him to like win the Mr. Olympia? No, it's not. But does he have the tools to do that? Absolutely, he does. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, next up, we got guest posing from Nick Walker three weeks after the New York Pro. And let's see what Nick's got. For some reason, there is no footage. I couldn't find any videos of this guest posing. There are only photos, but at least photos are pretty good. So we can see exactly what he looks like three weeks after the show. And I gotta say, he really kept his conditioning. Obviously, here he's not peaked, but I think his conditioning is better than it was at a Pittsburgh Pro Guest Posing, and I know why, because for that show, he was at the beginning of his peak week for New York Pro, and that's how it goes, usually one week out of a show, you look your worst, because some people are doing, you know, water loading or carb loading on that day, and then they deplete, and then they carb up again without too much water, that's usually how it's done, and usually one week out, you're completely off, the peak and then in seven days you peak your physique so this time around he didn't have to do anything like that so he probably you know adjusted his meals to look as good as possible at this guest posing he couldn't do that before the new york pro because it was very important for him but now he can do it and the main point of focus in this guest posing is of course of course his midsection that's what we're all looking for trying to see if he figured it out if he practice some posing or did something to control it better and you know i don't see a bubble gut in these photos but i see a pretty wide waist and i don't know if it is because of the size of his arms but you can see the outline of his torso i mean it's not the front lat spread you don't have to see it really but it still looks a little bit too 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 much right so he needs to do something about that man i don't even know how again Maybe just stay off the exercise that are involving the core, like, you know, heavy leg presses, heavy squats, stuff like that. And you might say, but he needs to improve his legs. No, no, yeah, I mean, he should improve them, but not like that. It's not worth it. I think it would be better if his legs stay the same, but his waist shrunk. That would definitely be a much better thing to do. There isn't a lot of time until the Mr. Olympia, but what he can do is just learn how to suck that stomach in and keep it super, super tight. For example, here in this transition to most muscular, he held it tight, but he needs to keep it like this the entire time. He can't relax in any second, and that's gonna require crazy, crazy stamina. He needs to practice that vacuum. He needs to practice the abdominal control to be able to keep it contracted, sucked in the entire time he's on stage. It's almost a mission impossible, but if anybody can do it, if anybody can commit that much and do something like that, it's Nick Walker. I just hope he understands that. I just hope he realizes how important it is. It's the only important thing for him right now. I want to say the most important, but the only important thing for him. Look at it right here in this variation of most muscular compared to the hands clasped. This is definitely much, much better because he's keeping the stomach tight and it actually looks pretty good. So once again, learn how to keep it like this the entire time he's on stage. And I thought this photo was interesting as well because Tyler Mannion kind of criticized Nick for hitting the crab pose. It didn't look good on him and so on. But he kept doing it. He did it for the fans right here. He probably won't do it on the Mr. Olympia stage, but he still liked to hit it here. And it looked better, honestly, than at the New York Pro because he was fuller. But it's not the best pose for him. His shoulders are not that massive. And his upper chest is also not that great. So not exactly the best variation of Nick Walker's most muscular. There are better ones. All the other ones are better than this one. Just, just keep this one for the Mr. Olympia. But yeah, he can hide his waist in this one. So probably that's why he likes it. And yeah, I mean, it's awesome to see big arms. But yeah, because of that shoulder, upper chest area, it's not looking very good. But it's okay. 
Although it's not necessary to hit all the most muscular variations, just pick a couple of very good ones for you and that's it. So those ones like with hands on hips and one hand on hip and hands clasped, that's enough if you ask me. And those are great, if he keeps the midsection tight, super super tight. And for the end of this video we got a little physique update from Behrus Tabani at less than 3 weeks out of Emperor Cup Spain where he's gonna face Michal Krizio, William Bonek, Sas Hirati, maybe Nathan Diasha, a bunch of really good freaking guys, so it's gonna be extremely tough to end up on top of that lineup, is it gonna be possible for this guy? I, I'm telling you guys, this guy is gonna be much more conditioned when he steps on the stage, still you can see here that he is in really good shape, the glutes are shredded, you don't see crazy deep separation, but it's gonna look much different on the stage. This guy is not afraid to dehydrate himself, you can see him one week out and then you see him on that stage and he looks super dry, super detailed. The only problem with Behrouz is his quads. It's a question of how much he improved them, how much he grew them. If they are matching the rest of his physique, yeah, he definitely has a chance of winning that show. But again, it's gonna be really tough because a lot of great competitors are doing that show and you know, I have no idea who's gonna win it. William Bonek, Nathan Diash if he does it, Bekrus Tabani, Mikhail Krizio, or even Sas Hirati, that's as far as I know, there are probably some other guys doing it as well, but it's gonna be extremely competitive. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, guys. All the best and bye-bye.